Good morning guys and welcome to day number six of the Rohan Solo Shark Bay series. So what I did yesterday was I went right into detail about my beach launch and everything and I made a big deal out of it but I'm probably not going to do as much of that today. I'm just going to keep it short and sharp getting into the water but I am doing a solo beach launch. The wind's coming from the north today which sort of sucks. It was coming from the east yesterday which made it a bit easier so this one's probably going to be trickier. I would say I'm not going to film it, but it's always when you don't film things that the worst things happen. So I'm going to keep the camera rolling, and then hopefully it all goes smoothly. If not, you're going to see it all. We're going to go over there, and then uh, here we're going to have a good day's fishing. Yeah, baby. All right, guys, so I've just made it back out to the ground that we're gonna be scratching for pinkies again today. I'm just gonna chuck this on, rub half my zinc off again. Oh, how good is that? So what I'm going to do today, I'm going to make it real fun for myself and I'm going to go for the biggest pinky I can find on the light gear. So 16 pound Siglon braid on this one. So I've got an 80 pound leader on here. I snelled two hooks with a ball sinker, just like that. I think I've got about five or six whole muleys left and that's it for me. So within those five or six muleys, I need to find a pinky that's at least 60 plus centimetres that's going to be worth me keeping and messing around with. Off the back of the boat, I'm not loving the wind today but still bearable. There's going to be fish down there. Whether or not it's the one I want we'll soon find out. I've got about a... actually my drift speed's not even bad today. To my surprise. Oh here we go. Ready? Oh, that's a fish. Yeah it's a fish. Oh, all right, so we're, we're probably on, I think we're on for a keeper here. Oh, I dropped him. What are the odds? Let's start that again. He got off. He got off on snelled hooks, eh? And he was a good fish too. He would have been about a 60 centimeter pinky, so. Now that he got off, at least I can maybe go for an 80 or something this time around. <laughs> I want the big dog. All right, we're straight back on again, ready? All right, there's a decent, nah, it's only baby. Bugger. Ooh. Oh, it's just starting to, nah, it's still only small, only small. <laughs> Thinking, geez, this one's starting to show a bit of life, but. I wonder if it's even a pinky, because it's not fighting that hard, eh? It's not. What have I got? Oh, wicked blue lined emperor. I was chasing these guys yesterday, hoping to get one, so. Oh, and I'm loaded with fish on the sounder right now. I really wanted some of these guys. I was trying to find them yesterday. I couldn't get them anywhere. The ground I'm on is going off. So I reckon I've just hit a school of these guys as well. So yeah, Ripper, Blue Line Emperor, 32 centimeters they have to be, I believe. But he's well and truly over that. I might switch to a pattern Noster rig, just so I'm running single hooks and have a better hook up rate. Oh, there, there we go. There's another, this will be another Emperor, I reckon. Which if it is, that's really good. I reckon it is. I actually want a few of these, so that'll make my day. Or is it a... Never mind. I foul hooked a pinky. Little guy can go back. 
Things are getting serious. So a couple of things about my trip out today, if you guys haven't watched the entirety of this series, is that I've been out here for like almost a week now, but I've only started fishing properly yesterday. It did really well, which was last episode. And then I'm gonna head home tomorrow, reason being is I don't have any more ice, I don't have any more bait, and I've kept some of the fish from yesterday, so I don't want to let that fish go to waste and I'm not going to be able to get my fridge down to a freezer until I start driving on the way home, which will be tomorrow. So rather than risk it spoiling while staying here an extra day, I'll just get out of here and quit while I'm ahead. It's been a bloody good time. All right. That's more like it. That's... That's more like it. <laughs> oh, yeah. Mama bear, come here. <laughs> oh, I'm not fighting over heavy on this one. Definitely a good fish, though. It's very nice. <laughs> but I don't have the drag set too tight because I'm not, I'm only on such like, yeah, 80 pound leader, but then. 16 pound braid i do not want it to snap because i get too confident oh this is a good fish though <laughs> i don't know if this is a pinky but i really not i haven't felt it turn sideways yet and it's it's just feeling lumpy man this might be something else oh it's about to get angry on the drift as well i wonder what it is Could it be a pink for the bag? Let's, I don't, I, I don't want to say it is, eh? Oh, whatever it is, it's nice. <laughs> yes. Oh, oh. <laughs> oh. oh, man. Let's have oh, I reckon that's pink. I reckon it's pink. Let's have a look. It'll be a nice one. It looks like a nice one. It's a nice one. It's a nice It's a nice one. <laughs> oh, yes. Oh, mate, I don't want to lose it, so I'm just taking my sweet time. And we're done, <laughs> and we're done. <laughs> ah, yeah. Shark Bay, Shark Bay, eh? You've done it again. <laughs> I'll give you a look. I actually wouldn't have called this for 70 centimeters, but it's a 70 centimeter pinky, so there you go. Another one there, very fine one. Probably don't want any bigger than that to eat. So we're gonna keep this one. I'm gonna try find a few more of those blue line then now though. So I'll stick some powdered nostrils down and we'll keep going, ripper. Right, I'm gonna be on here, another good fish. I'm sure of it, ready? Oh, I just realized I had my drag set so light from the last one, right, getting it off. Oh, has it got me in reef? All right, let's have a look. Hopefully this is an emperor. I just want more of these emperor. Not pinkies. Might be one too, I reckon. Oh, it's a Rankin. My first ever Rankin cod. This guy's happy as Larry. My first ever Rankin cod, but he's gonna go back in, let him grow a bit bigger. I'd love to find mum or dad of him. That's a good sign. I've got some different ground here. I'm gonna try to pick up some different fish. So put him back. In the last episode, when I got out on the water, I said I messed up by not bringing the right mounts with me for my GoPro. 
This time I messed up because I brought the right mounts, but I didn't bring a charger cable to charge the batteries on the boat. So I've only got one battery left after this one. So what that means is I'm just gonna only pretty much show you guys the clips of me catching fish. And I'm just gonna get baits in. When I hook up, I'll switch the camera on. As soon as I'm done, switch it off to save battery and hopefully just capture all the best parts of today while I'm out here. And then as soon as I get back to the trailer and the ute, once I get back in, then I can charge them up and we can keep going from there. I don't even know what to say anymore. <laughs> oh, oh, it's coming up. Oh, this is a nice fish. This is probably the fish of the trip. Oh, what's it doing? What is it doing? This is going to go for another belter of a run, I reckon. <laughs> I was just eating some corn chips and I was like, ah, oh. I'll drift, I'll drift merely out the back again. Oh wow, this is a very handsome fish. This is a huge. <laughs> oh, my arms are actually getting sore. Oh, oh I'm just gonna let it do the snake. Oh, this is a belter. <laughs> All right, guys, so midway through fighting that fish, the camera died right on cue like it always does, but it was another nice pink snapper. So what I'm going to switch to now is a Paternoster again. So I haven't fished a Paternoster since the last episode yesterday. Today, I've just been running snelled hooks with a ball sinker. I'll see if I can find the Emperor. If I find any more pinkies, then I'm just going to stop fishing for demersals altogether because I, don't, I can't really take any more and I don't want... I don't want pinkies, it has to be something else, either a Rankin or the Blue Line Emperor would be sweet. Hopefully this is an Emperor, but I don't think it is. Might be a small pink. Let's have a look, could be an Emperor. Let's go. Oh, Spanish flag. Boom. How good's that? So my first, the first, the first. So I got my first Rankin, my first size Blue Line Emperor, and now my first Spanish flag as well. That's pretty cool. I think I'm just gonna call it for now with the demersal fishing. I'm pretty happy with what I got. It would have been nice to get a nice plump Rankin cod. I've never eaten one of them before, never kept one. Super keen to try that, but I don't want to keep hooking up to pinkies one after the other. And with the fish I do have, I've only got my fish bag with me with a bit of seawater in there at the minute. I'm all out of ice because I've been out here for a week and I haven't gone back to denim at all. So what I'm actually going to do is shoot back in now. I'm going to throw this laser probe behind me and just troll it in. I've probably only got about like a three kilometer drive back in with the boat. So I'm just going to run this behind me at about eight knots the whole way. If something hits it, a Mackie, Ripper, you're going to see it. We're going to hook onto that and I'll probably keep that. If not, no big deal anyway. So we're going to shoot back in now and then we'll get back in. I'm going to fill up these fish up. So I'm almost back at the ute now. Nothing wanted to play ball then with the trawling back in. So I'm gonna wind that line back in now. I'm gonna take my kit off again, put the GoPro back on my head and I'll do the whole beach retrieval once more. I've pretty well got it down to a fine art now. So I'm not too stressed about it. It's just about to go 1 p.m. Uh, midday right now. So what I'm gonna do is focus on getting these fish filleted so they don't spoil. I'll get them chilled down in the fridge. One thing I will say though is because I was only coming in at about eight knots the whole way, I was getting such a good read of the bottom and there must have been at least five or six times where I was driving along and I just went, oh my God, looking at the bottom of the ground and you can just see fish lit up everywhere. They were all on the bottom, no pelagics, but anyway, I'll strip off now and I'm going to go in and we'll get the boat back on the trailer. The waves are surging a heap more today, which isn't fun. Oh, yeah. I 
you've lived until you've done a solo <laughs> beach retreat. <laughs> now I'm grab my anchor. Oh man, let's spin this around. All I don't want is that. At least that's on the right. Damn it. Oh, far out. There you go, my worst nightmare. And then keep that on. Get the boat back out. Come on, you bitch. let's go. Just, just. So I'm back. That wasn't easy. I had a bit of trouble there. The swell was pushing the boat across off the trailer and it's so hard just to get that first little instant bit of the the, uh, the winch strap to tighten up anyway. We're back in business now. She's all sweet there. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm actually gonna drive the boat back to camp because it'll only take me like three or four minutes, unhitch it again, and then drive back up the beach just like I did yesterday. I'm gonna fill it up with the fish, cry vacuum. And then I'm probably going to cook one of them up tonight. Maybe the Blue Line Emperor or the Spanish flag. I'll have a sus. For now, let's get back to camp, unhitch the boat, and then we'll move on. All right, guys. So I'm over where I filleted the fish yesterday, which was in the last episode. I don't want to mess around too much with the filming right now. It's getting quite windy. I haven't got the fish on ice because I've just had them straight in the bag. So I need to sort it out. All I'm going to do is chuck a time lapse on, fillet them quickly, and then I'll chat with you guys in a minute, and we'll see what the rest of the day has in store. Alright guys, if I still got you here and you're listening to this, do not go anywhere. I have a heap to say and I want to use this final episode to the series to close it out rather than make a new one in addition and try and touch base with people there. So what I've just done, I went down to the beach just before, I filleted up the fish, they're now in the fridge. Everything today went sweet. I, I got my fish. I was very happy with what I got. Unfortunately, the weather wasn't as good as I thought it would be today. And that didn't give me the opportunity to go out chasing any pelagics. So I'd rather play it safe and just head in, quit while I'm ahead and not risk anything and just be grateful for what I've got rather than go overboard with it. I've got more than enough fish to last me the next couple months now, which means I can put my head down and really focus on the editing side of things and getting this content out to you guys because by the time you see this right now that you're going to be listening to, as I'm saying it, it's probably going to be about two months away from the actual fact of when it was done. So to, to summarise the trip, even just sitting here right now, like my heart's actually starting to race now. Like I, I genuinely almost feel like I could cry with happiness on how good this week has felt for me, how overwhelmed I feel with the response I've been getting from people on social media. I feel good. I haven't felt good for the longest time this year and right now I feel good. I feel on top of the world and if you look behind me, I'm actually pretty well on top of the world too. So this whole trip started just over there behind me. 
at our first campsite. That was the Herald Bight where I first started. We made our way over here. If you've never been here, guys, I would 100% recommend it. If you've loved what you've seen over the last few days, put it high on your bucket list. This place is just literally like a playground for adults. It's just one of those places like I just, you haven't been seeing everything that I've been getting up to and I've been turning the camera off here and there and then just doing things willy nilly for myself like finishing up for the day, turning the camera off, then going for a drive and you just go from one site to the next and you just have a lounge around and just have a look and the yarns I've been having to people, people have been so good here, everyone's been friendly as, you've got so much trust in everyone, you don't get all these blow-ins that want to cause a ruckus or cause trouble in places like this because it's such an effort to get to somewhere like this that everybody puts in the money commitment, the time commitment and the effort to get to a spot like this that nobody wants to mess it up for anyone. So as I say my farewells, to cap on the week, not much has really gone too wrong. I'll tell you some things that have gone half wrong is I bought the drone the night before I was meant to come up here. I went and splashed over $2,000 for a drone. Turns out I downloaded the wrong app but I went on the Play Store. I downloaded the only app that was there. It turns out you can't even get it off there, I think. So the drone was a waste of money. That was the only thing that really half stressed me out on the whole trip. And then on top of that, I lost my number plate to the boat trailer, but good riddance to that one because it was actually a Mandra number plate. Anyone from WA would understand. The last thing I really wanted on the back of my boat was a Mandra number plate. Uh, it's actually got me in trouble before, funnily enough, going back to my hometown and fishing some spots down there where people thought I was from Mandra and were trying to kick me out of, you know, their secret spots, not knowing that I was actually a local. Well, for 21 years, I was a local anyway. So apart from the number plate and the drone thing, everything's gone smoothly, but it's never over till it's over. So with it all being said and done, it begs the question of what's gonna be next because something like this, I can't do consistently and bring to you guys all the time. It's cost a huge amount of money. It's taken a week of my time to be here and live it. And then it's gonna take weeks and months of my time to edit through the footage and get this out to you guys. So what I actually wanna to say to you all is, in about 12 months time, I have the intention of leaving my job as a plumber. Not that there's anything wrong with my employer. I have worked for a great company. Being a plumber has been a great career path for me to get me to the point that I am in life, but I want more out of life. I love what I'm doing so much that I'm pretty much willing to give up the idea of the house, kids, that whole sort of thing and put that on hold for it, like at least another five years to chase my dreams. And what I want to do in 12 months time is put all of my resources towards this sort of thing, full time, hitting the road, bringing content out to you guys and then seeing where I can take it. There's no telling where it's gonna go or if it's even gonna work, but rather than sit on my hands and wait until it happens to tell you guys, oh, hey, you know, I had this planned all along, I'd rather say it right now so that if things do work out in a year or two's time and I can actually make it go out of this and, and make it a real thing, then people can understand it was premeditated, I believed in it, I believed in myself, and we all did it together sort of thing. It's not so much, I don't wanna, I don't want to lie to anyone and pretend that I'm not trying to make something out of this now because the truth of the matter is that I am. I really, really love what I'm doing. I wake up excited for fishing. I wake up excited for camping. I wake up excited for filming. And every time that I can bring a new video out to you guys and they get bigger and better each time, it just feels so awesome to me. And that's a feeling that I just want to keep on chasing. So. What that also means is I can't consistently bring trips like this out to you guys over the next 12 months because it means I've got to find the happy medium between shooting content and saving money. So they sort of don't go hand in hand because one's expensive and one means you have to be a bit of a recluse. So I'm going to do the best I can to bring out parts to you guys, but it's all for the greater good that eventually if I put in the hard work right now that maybe one day I can turn it into a real thing and this can be us and we can all be doing this together. So without saying much else, thank you so much for watching this episode and if you finished the series with me, thank you so much for that. I hope to not see you guys again because I'm just gonna go cook that fish up. I'm gonna enjoy my last sunset here on my own. Get out of here tomorrow and the only reason you'll be seeing me, like I always say, is if something goes wrong. So until then, thank you again. I'll see you guys in the next episode and we'll do something awesome once more.